Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer uh, with PredMed Heart Attack Stroke Prevention. We're going to talk about inflammation and how is it different, how is it the same as other inflammatory processes. Uh, this came out, this is a headline from Harvard Health Publications. What is inflammation? And the first thing they start talking about is inflammation as a cause of heart attack and stroke especially to cardiovascular disease. Now, <clears throat> and how does it, that type of inflammation compare to other types of inflammation? There are plenty of inflammatory diseases uh, out there, ranging from uh, <clears throat> rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where the immune system mistakenly attacks the thyroid gland. Skin. Dermatologists see a lot of inflammatory diseases. Uh, eczema, psoriasis, scleroderma. Uh, their gastro gastroenterologists see a lot of inflammatory diseases. Um, celiac, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Now, <clears throat> Is cardiovascular disease really an autoimmune disease? I haven't heard anybody classify it as an autoimmune disease, but but clearly, as you saw in the in this Harvard newsletter, people are beginning to talk about cardiovascular disease as an inflammatory disease. So what does that mean? Um, and what is the comparison here? <clears throat> I'm going to show you a microscopic view of uh, inflammatory disease, starting with rheumatoid arthritis, and then we'll compare that to the inflammatory process that you find in an artery in a plaque. So, <clears throat> uh, the Ford Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, uh, cancer prevention, disability prevention. Um, prevention takes discipline, but you can get there, and it's a heck of a lot better than a cure. Okay, so this is this is a uh, representation of the cells and the inflammatory process in rheumatoid arthritis. As you see, here's the cartilage, and here's the bone, and this is being attacked. The cartilage and bone are being attacked by inflammatory cells. T cells, monocytes, other cells where the immune system is attacking the body. And in fact, if you go back to this, uh, to this Harvard uh, public newsletter article, basically what they're saying is that inflammation is the body's uh, natural response to protect itself. In other words, the immune system is attacking something. Now, how does that infl inflammation happen in cardiovascular disease? Well, this is a clean artery with <clears throat> no plaque in it. There are two layers that we're very concerned about, the intima layer and the media layer. What happens is LDL gets deposited. It goes through cracks in, that sometimes occur in the intima layer. Um, that's why LDL, or bad cholesterol, is so important. People pay so much attention to it. In fact, they've paid a little bit too much attention to it because just plain old deposits of LDL in that um, intimate media space is really not the problem. Here's where the problem starts occurring, where the body, the immune system, starts attacking those spaces. And here's a Here's a view of a, an artery cut on what we call a longitudinal or lengthwise cross-section. This part does not have any deposition of LDL. This part's starting to get some deposition. And you get more and more as you go down this, this direction. You also get what we call inflammation. These dots represent white cells that have come in and started to attack this LDL to, to attempt to digest it. As you see, at a certain point, you get uh, what we call necrotic or dead tissue 
spewing out of caps, fibrous caps, uh, that have broken through into the artery. And, uh, again, this is just a, a, a teaching point in this illustration. Once you get that uh, happening, that's called soft plaque or inflammatory plaque. Once it touches the bloodstream, it causes a clot. Now, <clears throat> what has this all got to do with heart attack? Well, let's look at and think about one of the uh, more well-known uh, heart attack victims. 2008, Tim Russert, uh, very well-known, beloved um, newsman, host of uh, Meet the Press, had a heart attack and died in the, uh, I believe it was the NBC uh, news office where he was the bureau chief. Um, <clears throat> If I got the wrong news company, please forgive me. <clears throat> but after they did, the, they did an autopsy on Mr. Russert. And when they did, the uh, pathologist made the statement that the inside of uh, Mr. Russert's arteries were bumpy, like the pimply face of a teenager. And again, you begin to see what was going on. He'd had this type of uh, plaque deposition then inflammation, and he was spewing out inflamed soft plaque. One of those caused a clot, and that in turn caused a heart attack. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go through several different versions of microscopic views of plaque. This is uh, the, the intima layer. This is LDL that's been deposited. Here you see uh, smooth muscle cells that came from the media, the muscle layer. They actually start proliferating and growing up into the plaque. Here you see uh, T cells, mast cells. There are chemicals released here that cause, and in different areas of a plaque that cause immune cells to start coming into the plaque. They release enzymes, and then these enzymes um, begin to digest the plaque. <clears throat> here's another view. <clears throat> and, here, and here's some other cells that you see coming into it. Uh, T cells, mast cells, um, a what we call necrotic core where the enzymes have digested the material. Up here you see loss of the uh, cartilage, the fibrous cap. When you get that, that's when you get spewing of the uh, inflamed plaque. That is what causes the uh, the thrombus or the clot. Over here you see some uh, mention of tissue necrotic factor, TNF and IL, interleukin, all different factors that are released by the liver and uh, tissues to increase this inflammatory process. Again, the, uh, human, the human body's immune system is saying we want to get rid of the fat that's been deposited in this artery. And that's what causes our problem. This is a mast cell. Uh, again, um, a lot of the actual cellular components of plaque and again, the part that causes inflammation, the part that causes danger. Another view of this. <clears throat> Here you see loss of fibrinogen, the fiber uh, that's used to keep the cap tight over the, uh, the wall and the intima. <clears throat> Here you see, again, another depiction of the smooth muscle cells beginning to migrate up into this. Here you see a thrombus that's being formed. Um, you've heard of nitric oxide. This is uh, adding some representation of nitric oxide, LDL. You may have heard of oxidized LDL. Um, that's where LDL in this area has been oxidized by um, different enzymes in the, in the plaque that are being released by the immune cells. Now this <clears throat> picture shows a fairly comprehensive list 
of all of the different types of immune cells that get involved with plaque. Let's start up here. <clears throat> Platelets releasing what we call chemokines, IL, which stands for interleukin, TGF, which stands for tissue uh, growth factor, neutrophils or, or plain white cells, they release myeloperoxidase or MPO. If you've read the book uh, Beat the Heart Attack Gene by Bale and Donin, they refer to MBO as the joker. That's one of the inflammatory tests that we look for. You can actually see increases of myeloperoxidase in the, uh, in the bloodstream. Other cells that you see here, monocytes, macrophages, again releasing interleukins uh, and other tissue factors. Mast cells releasing proteases. <clears throat> Uh, dendritic cells, which are T cells, are, are mast cells which have responded to antigen uh, stimulation. B cells, CD8s, T regulatory cells, CD4s. Again, a huge host of many families of immune cells become involved with these plaques. Here's a cross sectional view, again, showing the different types of white cells that are involved. This is the um, cross-sectional view of the artery wall. This is the plaque area. And this is where the fibrous cap has, has been dissolved. And uh, you start to get some clot here. Interleukin factors and a host of other uh, tissue necrotic factors and cytokines or cell attractants. That's what, that's what that means. It's, again, another one of those medical words, cyto meaning... Um, cell and uh, kinds meaning attractants. This, this process causes the release of cytokines and therefore attracts cells, white cells, to this process. Again, you have a list of those over here. <clears throat> Remember we talked many times about uh, a CIMT, carotid intimate media test. Just as a reminder, <clears throat> when we see a plaque in a CIMT, uh, this is where we usually see it. There's more of what we call a bulb formation here. This is the internal carotid, the external carotid, and the common carotid. You get a little bit of turbulence in any um, tube where you split the flow. And again, the, th the images that we've been talking about with all those inflammatory cells are uh, what's going on in here. That is, if we have a soft plaque. And that's why we look for a soft plaque. On the ultrasound technology uh, of a CIMT, you can tell whether a plaque is soft or has begun to calcify, or is completely calcified. Here's another look at it. We've shown this on a couple of other videos. Here's the media layer on this cross section of an artery. Here's an intima layer here. You can see the intima layer very well in this space, very thin. This is a, uh, a waxy substance here. That's the LDL alone. And this is where you've got a soft plaque. The, uh, uh, the immune cells have come in and started to dissolve this plaque. This is a close-up, and you see it's liquefied and therefore pulling away from the, uh, the microscope-prepared slide. <clears throat> That inflamed plaque is dangerous, as we've said before. Um, both the last patient and this patient, or the last image and this image were both taken from uh, autopsy slides of patients that had recently died of a heart attack. Th on this one, this is also a cross-section of an artery, uh, muscle layer, intima layer, and you can see the thin intima layer very well here. You can also see that it's got cracks. You can also see that there was um, liquid inflamed plaque here. Once it started to seep through into the bloodstream, a clot came back all the way into here. The larger part of the clot floated down and killed the patient. Another inflamed uh, area of plaque inflammation occurring here. Now, <clears throat> One of the key areas that we've talked about, we've only mentioned it a couple of times, we haven't really shown it in many images, is this fibrous plaque, uh, fibrous cap. <clears throat> when you have an inflammation continuing and increasing, 
you get loss of this fibrous cap. That's why you get the spewing of this necrotic material, this hot inflamed plaque. But when you slow down the inf inflammation process, you get something else. Remember we talked about, first of all, flex of calcification. This image shows just that. Uh, and this is going on up in this area. <clears throat> this is a plaque that has become stabilized because of a healthy fibrous plaque uh, cap that's, been, that's uh, been laid down. And again, you see some calcification there. As this process continues, uh, again, you have to do that with decreased inflammation. Um, you get further stabilization. And on the CIMT, you'll see that the plaque begins, begins to look completely calcified. Those types of plaques are totally, uh, they're benign. They're not going to cause a heart attack. So again, <clears throat> lots of things to learn about inflammation, what it looks like microscopically.